travel experiences from around the world. Sitia, a coastal town on Crete, situated in the northeastern part of the Lasithi region. It is accessible by boat and by plane, and it's an ideal base for exploring the surrounding area. I visited Sitia for three days in October 2015, invited by the Sitia Development Organization and the Association of Hoteliers. A tour that included beautiful beaches, picturesque villages, sightseeing, hiking, and contact with the local culture and cuisine. A region with smiley and friendly people, and which hasn't been spoiled by touristic development on the largest island in Greece. Our time here was limited, so we visited only a few places on both sides in order to make me feel that I have something to come back to see in Eastern Crete. Although Sitia isn't particularly picturesque, it's a beautiful seaside amphitheater city stretched out along the coast. It has about 10,000 inhabitants and is lively day and night. It is worth walking along the beach, where you can find taverns, cafes, and bars, and the narrow streets that lead up to the hill to Kazarma, the fortress of the castle which was the commanding post during Venetian rule. On the port road, there is a pavilion which houses a unique exhibit, the first sundial clock ever discovered, which also serves as an analog latitude computer, which precedes the mechanism of Antikythera by about 1,400 years. Our tour in the region began at the east, specifically from ancient Ithanos, which is located 27 kilometers from Sitia an area of historical importance which flourished during the Hellenistic and Roman periods, being an export hub for goods to the east. Just above Itanos is Hermopolis Beach, which is very beautiful and peaceful, ideal for relaxation. Leaving Hermopolis behind, we moved south to get to Vai, one of the many famous beaches of Crete. Vai is home to the largest palm grove on the island, but also the largest with this type of palm in Europe, and is a protected natural area which extends 200 acres. The scenery is exotic. Palm trees, golden sand and blue water make a very beautiful and impressive scene. To enjoy the panoramic view, it is worth climbing up the hill observatory. From there you can continue on to South Beach, which is not organized, much quieter and nudist friendly. We made our way back, wanting to make our next stop at Toplou Monastery, one of the famous monasteries of Crete with a long history, situated 10 kilometers east of Sitia. It has a large number of valuable Byzantine icons, which shows that it flourished in the 14th and 15th centuries. The museum of the monastery exhibited remarkable images, ecclesiastical arts and crafts, and military relics from the Turkish occupation and World War II. Our interesting tour there was given by George Augustinakis, an interesting man whose knowledge really impressed me. Just opposite the monastery lies the winery, which produces wine and a traditional drink called Raki, as well as the Viositia company, which produces organic olive oil. If you're at the monastery, you should visit these places to try unique wines and top quality olive oil, which is exported in packaged bottles to 27,000 outlets in Northern Europe. The tour and wine tasting was hosted by the enologist Manolis Tafilakis, a man who loves what he does and shows it in a unique way.
Leaving the monastery and the wonderful people behind, we returned to Scythia. In the evening, we were invited to the home of Nick Savidakis to watch the production process of Raki, the traditional drink of Crete. It was here where we realized how Cretan hospitality is. We ate very nice local dishes, drank Raki, and watched the distillation process called Kazanem. At Nick's home, I saw an impressive invention, a wood oven that cooks food with swirling air, which was designed by Manolis Verigakis. Our next stop was in Piscokefalo village, one of the biggest and richest villages in the municipality of Sitia, where Vicenzo Scornaros, the poet who wrote Eridocritos, was from. We were shown around the beautiful streets of the village and the house of Vicenzo Scornaros by John Ramuzis, and after that, we drank some raki at his tavern. The next day, we started off from La Sion Golden Bay Hotel, where we spent the night, to go to the village of Exo Muliana. A few kilometers outside the village, we met Yanis Halkias, our guide for Richtis Canyon. It's a downhill hike that will take us about two hours through an easy path that follows the bed of a small river. The vegetation in the area is strong, with many platanus, walnut, oleanders, and many other species of trees. Even though there are only a few places where you need to be careful, you feel like you're crossing the jungle. The length of the route is about 3 kilometers and descends an altitude of 350 meters. In the middle of the gorge, we came across the ruins of two water mills, where locals used to grind wheat and other grains using the pressure of the water. After an hour and a half of walking, you'll reach the waterfall of Richtis, which falls from a height of about 20 meters, creating beautiful scenery. It is the best place to relax and enjoy this unique natural beauty. Hiking this canyon is something that many travelers from around the world come to experience. The path leads to the Bay of Richtis, and ideally you should arrange for someone to pick you up and take you back to the village, as it's steep and the distance is long to go on foot. So we ended up being hungry in the village, so we enjoyed some local recipes at the beautiful square and drank our last raki on the island, as our time was coming to an end. Sitia is different than other places on Crete that I've visited. Even the traditional music differs, as violin is a traditional instrument, not the Cretan lira. It has all the necessary infrastructure to fully serve tourism, while keeping the authenticity through its selflessness of its people. Information about the places we visited can be found at tripment.net.